Welcome back. We have been considering the effect of uh, chemical reaction on the mass transfer rate within the framework of the surface renewal theories. And in the last lecture, uh, we set up the equations in the framework of uh, these theories uh, that describe the instantaneous reaction regime. Um, so, you recall that these were the equations. So, the instantaneous reaction regime is uh, one in which uh, A diffuses from the interface and B diffuses from the bulk and they meet and consume each other at a reaction plane which is located somewhere within the surface element. So, this uh, reaction plane itself starts at the gas liquid interface uh, at the instant the uh, uh, liquid element arrives at the uh, gas liquid interface and as the um, uh, element ages at the interface it is as it spends more and more time at the interface the uh, reaction plane progressively moves inward into the um, liquid element. So, this becomes a moving boundary problem and uh, if you look at the equations that uh, were set up. So, there is a region between 0 and zeta 1 of theta uh, where zeta 1 is the location uh, in non dimensional terms of the um, uh, reaction plane. Uh, so, the region between 0 and the reaction plane the interface and the reaction plane is occupied by A and uh, since there is no B there cannot be a reaction there. So, it is a case of pure diffusion. The region between the reaction plane and the rest of the element uh, is occupied by B and once again since there is no A there there cannot be a reaction and this is the equation that governs the um, uh, pure diffusion of uh, B uh, in that region. At the reaction plane itself because the reaction is assumed to be instantaneous the concentration of A and B both go to 0 and the rate of supply of B from the uh, uh, in the uh, negative x direction if you like uh, is uh, in stoichiometric requirement as compared to the rate of supply of uh, A in the positive x direction. So, that is why there is a sign difference here. So, now this is the formulation of the problem and uh, in order to solve this we require a little more information and that is because this is a moving boundary problem we need to track the boundary movement. Now, this can be done in various ways and um, Bird Stewart Lightfoot in their in the first edition of their book transport phenomena suggest a very elegant way of doing this and uh, we will simply state that before proceeding further. So, this approach consists in recognizing that at the reaction plane the following identity holds. We have the concentration of uh, A which is a function of uh, uh, zeta and theta and since we are considering the reaction plane it is zeta 1 which is itself a function of theta is identically equal to 0. So, A at the reaction plane is a function of uh, the single variable theta and that um, is uh, uh, a constant value and it is 0. So, if we differentiate this we get d A by d theta equals partial d A by d zeta 1. Uh, d zeta 1 upon d theta plus partial d a by d theta and this is equal to 0 and this gives you the equation for the boundary movement which is d zeta 1 by d theta. So, this can be re rearranged to get the rate at which uh, zeta 1 moves with theta and that equation can be used along with the previously shown equations in order to arrive at a solution to these equations. So, that solution is analytically possible and uh, uh, it is uh, the details of the solution are available in uh, the books that I mentioned in the previous lecture, the book by um, uh, Dankwartz that is gas liquid reactions and uh, the uh, uh, book on transport phenomena by Bird Stewart and Lightfoot. Uh, we will not uh, go into the details of the solution uh, except to mention that the solutions uh, you know looking at the nature of the equations. Uh, the solutions can be expected to be of the error function type um, and uh, so we uh, um, formulate the uh, error function solutions 
in terms of the uh, variable x divided by uh, or zeta divided by 2 root theta in non dimensional terms and uh, the constants are evaluated using the conditions that I have uh, uh, laid out earlier. So, now uh, it turns out when you solve these equations that uh, the um, uh, rate of the instantaneous rate of uh, absorption or the instantaneous flux which is given by uh, negative of the diffusivity multiplied by the concentration gradient at the interface. So, this flux uh, has the same kind of dependence on time as the flux in the case of physical mass transfer. In other words, if you look at the uh, absorption rate at every point during the life of the surface element, the absorption flux is greater than the physical absorption flux by a constant factor. Since this factor which enhances the instantaneous mass transfer rate is a constant, ultimately when you average these instantaneous rates uh, weighted with the i of t dt function, whether you assume the Higbee function or the Dankworth's function for the i of t dt that is the plug flow or the uh, mixed flow assumption at the interface, it does not really matter uh, as far as the effect of reaction on the uh, mass transfer rate is concerned or in other words uh, in, uh, in so far as the calculation of enhancement factor is concerned. So, if you can define an instantaneous enhancement factor which is the rate by which is the factor by which the instantaneous flux is higher than the physical mass transfer flux at every time during the uh, life of the surface element this instantaneous enhancement factor is independent of time and therefore, uh, the average enhancement factor over the entire life of the element whether you average the um, uh, enhancement factors using the Higbee function or the Dankworth's function it gives you the same result. So, that result is uh, what I will give you next. So, that is given by an expression of this kind error function of beta divided by square root of d a, where this function uh, beta, where this parameter beta uh, comes from the transcendental function exponential of beta squared divided by d b error function complement beta divided by square root of d a equals d b rather. Uh, q square root of d a upon d b e to the power beta squared by d a error function of beta divided by square root of d a. So, this is the um, equation that is implicit in beta which has to be solved by a process of trial and error knowing the other quantities like q and uh, d a and d b and once you get beta you substitute this in the uh, um, enhancement factor expression and this is the same expression uh, in uh, both the surface renewal theories that we have considered that is Higby and Dankworth's. So, the um, message that we are trying to convey here is that within the um, framework of these theories the surface renewal theories E infinity turns out to be or the maximum enhancement factor available to a system uh, turns out to be a function of d a by d b and the parameter q. Recall that it was a function only of q in the film theory and uh, here it there is an additional parameter which is the ratio of diffusivities. We have uh, said that often this ratio is not very far from unity the uh, uh, rate of uh, I mean the diffusivity of A uh, ratioed with respect to the diffusivity of B uh, is uh, a number something like 1 in many cases and in that situation in those situations the uh, uh, E infinity becomes a function of uh, Q alone in the ambit of uh, surface renewal theories as it does in the case of the film theory. Moreover, there is also while these expressions look very different from the expression that uh, we uh, obtain for the film theory, it turns out that if the value of the enhancement factor is large, then there is a very simple approximation that obtains to this complicated expression here and that is 
e infinity equals square root of d a upon d b multiplied by 1 plus q. And if you recall that uh, without this diffusivity function what remains was the uh, enhancement factor predicted in the instantaneous reaction regime uh, by the film theory. So, the factor that distinguishes the surface renewal theory expression from the film theory expression is just this factor square root of the diffusivity ratio. Now, the this is as I said it is an approximation and the error that you make uh, in uh, uh, calculating enhancement factor by this expression is of the order of 1 over 2 e infinity. So, the larger the value of the enhancement factor is the, in other words the larger the value of q is uh, the smaller the error that you make in using this expression. So, now we are in a we have gone through the entire gamut of regimes uh, in the surface renewal theory framework and we are now in a position to put the entire story down in terms of a plot of enhancement factor versus square root of m or also called as hatta number. So, we have hatta number of 1 somewhere there let us say hatta number of 3 somewhere here and uh, uh, so, the enhancement factor remains 1. Um, so, this is the uh, story according to surface renewal theories and so this is a slow reaction regime where we said that there is absolutely no difference between the uh, surface renewal theories and the film theory and about 1 the enhancement factors start to lift off the ground. So, this is 1 and we have a um, uh, region here which I will show by dotted lines which is the transition slow to fast where there is a bit of a difference between the film theory and the surface renewal theory. So, this is the film theory asymptote would be here slightly below, but uh, the difference is not much and as the Hatta number becomes larger and larger you have the fast reaction asymptote obtaining E is equal to root m and depending on the value of the instantaneous enhancement factor you have got branches coming out of this asymptote and these are increasing values of E infinity and the E infinity itself is given by normally by this expression here with beta being calculated by that expression, but for larger values of E infinity we can use this approximation. So, we have the um, slow reaction regime where film theory is equal to the surface renewal theory is identical with the surface renewal theory. We have the transition regime where to a good approximation you can calculate the enhancement factor by either the expression given by the uh, film theory or the expression given by the surface renewal theory. Uh, the two differ by uh, a few percent at most and then in the fast reaction regime once again you have got a situation where the surface renewal theory and the film theory agree completely for reasons that we have elaborated on earlier and then in the instantaneous reaction regime there is a difference if the diffusivities of A and B are very different from each other. So, there is this region what we have normally called as the transition fast to instantaneous. So, this regime. So, before this regime we have the fast reaction regime E is equal to root m and uh, beyond this we have got the uh, instantaneous reaction regime E is equal to E infinity. So, how do we calculate the enhancement factor in this region? One can of course, graphically do an interpolation between this asymptote and the appropriate asymptote here, but uh, it has been shown that a good approximation is to use the same expression that we derived with the film theory um, using uh, making that is making a pseudo first order uh, rate assumption 
except that the uh, pseudo first order rate constant as is calculated as k c b i using the value of the concentration of b at the interface rather than as k c b b which uses the uh, concentration of b in the bulk. So, the expression that uh, we had derived then if you recall is square root of m e infinity minus e divided by e infinity minus 1 divided by tan h of the same quantity m e infinity minus e divided by e infinity minus 1. So, this equation obtains for the transition regime fast to instantaneous. So, the only difference between the way you calculate enhancement factor in the surface renewal theory and the uh, way you do it in film theory is that while you are doing using the same expression the value of E infinity that you use uh, comes from the penetration theory or the surface renewal theory expression which is different as we have seen when the diffusivities are different as compared to um, the film theory situation. So, the value of I mean the, the definition of E infinity is what changes in this expression depending on what theory you use. Okay, so, we have completed the discussion of the various reaction regimes uh, in both the film theory and the surface renewal theory and an important point that uh, it makes the entire discussion makes is that uh, while the film theory is uh, uh, supposed to be less accurate as compared to the surface renewal theory in so far as the prediction of the mass transfer coefficient on the diffusivity is uh, more correct in the surface renewal theories. When it comes to predicting the effect of reaction on the mass transfer rate in the slow reaction regime in the um, transition fast uh, slow to fast to a good approximation and certainly in the fast reaction regime that is in the entire pseudo first order uh, situation the film theory is uh, nearly as good as the surface renewal theories for the purposes of predicting the enhancement factor. So, this is uh, convenient because in more complex cases um, uh, it is always uh, simpler to use the film theory because there are ordinary differential equations and uh, uh, finite uh, fields and so on um, as compared to the surface renewal theories. The only places where there is a difference is where the concentration of B starts to make a difference to the overall absorption rate that is in the second order regimes. So, um, having uh, come so far now let us see whether um, uh, we can relax some of the assumptions that we made at the very beginning. There are two important assumptions that we made. Number one was that there was no gas phase resistance and uh, number two that the reaction is second order that is first order with respect to A and first order with respect to B. So, taking the first uh, uh, taking the second assumption first uh, that is let us look at the effect of different reaction orders. So, we will see the effect of relaxing the assumptions So, the first assumption is that the assumption of reaction order. So, we have assumed that A plus nu B going to C C is the reaction and uh, we have assumed that the rate the intrinsic rate of this expression of, of this reaction is uh, given by K C A C B that is the case for which we have developed the theory so far. Supposing the reaction is mth order in A and nth order in B and the rate constant is appropriately designated as K M N what difference does this make and uh, how good are the theories that we have uh, developed so far for the second order reaction in cases such as this. So, it turns out that uh, all that needs to be done is to redefine the Hatta number in the following manner. So, it is the physical mass transfer coefficient in the denominator and 2 divided by m plus 1 diffusivity of A 
the rate constant C A star raised to the power m minus 1 C B bulk raised to the power n. So, provided you calculate your root m in that manner, this root m can be uh, plugged into all expressions of the enhancement factor that we have derived and you get reasonable results. So, this is a very good uh, way of extending the theory to um, reactions of uh, other than second order. The second assumption that uh, we want to examine is the assumption of negligible gas phase resistance and this turns out to be quite simple. If the gas phase resistance is not negligible, all that it means is that the uh, value of C A star that we have been using in the theoretical expressions has now to be calculated as being in equilibrium with the interfacial partial pressure of uh, the gas, which in this case would be different from the bulk partial pressure of the gas. So, uh, we do that by we calculate the interfacial partial pressure by um, equating the flux of uh, the gaseous solute from the gas side to the flux on the liquid side. In other words, we, we use the usual balance for two phase mass transfer. If P stands for the partial pressure of A and P A B is the partial pressure of A in the bulk of the gas that is in the interior of the bubble if you like uh, and uh, P A I is the value of the partial pressure at the gas liquid interface then this would be equal to the rate at which the gas is taken away and that is K L into C A I minus C A B where C A is the concentration C A I is the concentration of A in the liquid at the gas liquid interface minus C A bulk is the concentration of A uh, in the bulk. And usually as we have seen if the enhancement factor needs to be considered in if uh, uh, E is greater than 1 it usually implies that C A B is close to 0. So, either you have a situation where the rate is given by K L into C A I minus C A B or you have a situation where it is given by K L into A E into C A I, C A B being equal to 0. And uh, the C A I and P A I are in equilibrium with each other being the concentrations, the partial pressure and the concentration on the two sides of the interface or we can write C A I is the C A star corresponding to P A I and this could be given by Henry's law or whatever a suitable uh, thermodynamic expression. Therefore, um, the essential theory uh, remains the same except that wherever we have had uh, C A star being calculated as being in equilibrium with uh, the bulk partial pressure of the gas, we replace that by the a quantity that is calculated as being in equilibrium with the partial pressure at the interface which itself is given by this expression here. So, that is all that needs to be done in order to take gas phase resistance into account. Okay. In order to see how these things work, uh, let us take a, an example and uh, so we look at this example here. Um, for the instantaneous reaction regime and the transition to the instantaneous reaction. Um, so, the example is about calculation of the maximum enhancement factor and the actual enhancement factor. So, let me read the problem. Carbon dioxide is being absorbed from a gas into a solution of sodium hydroxide at 20 degree centigrade in a packed tower. At a certain point in the tower, the partial pressure of carbon dioxide is 1 bar and the concentration of sodium hydroxide is 0.5 kilo moles per meter cubed. Other data are as follows. The physical mass transfer coefficient is 10 to the power minus 4 meters per second. Interfacial area per unit volume of packed space is 100 meter inverse uh, that is 100 meter squared per meter cubed of packed space. The concentration of A at the interface is given as 0 0.04 kilo moles per meter cubed. We assume that the uh, gas phase resistance is negligible. 
The second order rate constant of the reaction is 10 to the power 4 meter cube per kilo mole second and the diffusivity of A and B are this should be diffusivity of B. A and B are given find the maximum enhancement possible and the actual enhancement and find also the actual absorption rate in units of kilo moles per second per unit volume of packed space. So, the reaction stoichiometry is given here. So, 1 mole of carbon dioxide reacts with 2 moles of sodium hydroxide. So, how do we attempt this example? The maximum enhancement factor um, we note first of all that the, cons the diffusivities of A and B are quite different from each other. Uh, and in fact, uh, the ratio of the diffusivity of B to the diffusivity of A in this case turns out to be 1.7 if you calculate uh, this ratio from the given values of the diffusivities. Therefore, because this is significantly different from 1, we have to use the surface renewal theories in order to calculate. the maximum enhancement factor. And uh, rather than use that complex expression, we will first see whether E infinity can be calculated by the approximate expression that we had, which is square root of d a upon d b 1 plus q. q itself is given by d b c b b divided by nu d a c a star and putting in the values d b um, d b upon d a is 1.7 and c b b is 0.5 kilo moles per meter cubed. Nu the stoichiometric factor is 2 moles of NaOH per mole of uh, uh, carbon dioxide multiplied by C A star that is 0 0.04. This value turns out to be 10.625. Not a particularly large number in this case. We have said that Q is often of the uh, order of 100 or more, but uh, carbon dioxide has a relatively larger solubility as compared to gases such as uh, oxygen, hydrogen, etcetera. So, this value is a moderate uh, value of about 10 or 11. If we substitute this value of q in the expression for E infinity above, we calculate the value of E infinity as 8.91. And uh, so, remember that this is an approximate value since we have used this expression. And uh, if we want to estimate the error, we can do this as 1 over 2 e infinity and so approximately the error is going to be of the order of 1 over 18 or thereabouts. So, that is an acceptable value of the error uh, because often the errors in the mass transfer coefficient itself are uh, of a larger magnitude than this. So, let us proceed further and calculate the actual enhancement factor as the problem requires us to do. So, in order to calculate the actual enhancement factor, we need to first estimate the regime, so that we know which expression to use. So, this question can be answered by calculating the uh, value of the Hutta number or root m which for a second order reaction can be calculated in the following manner. This is the standard definition for a second order reaction and if we plug in the values, um, it turns out that 1 over m is 1 over k l which is 10 to the power minus 4 meters per second. All units are in S i therefore, we do not have to do any conversions. 1.8 multiplied by 10 raised to minus 9 is the value of diffusivity in square meters per second. K is 10 to the power 4 second order rate constant multiplied by 0.5 is the value of the sodium hydroxide concentration. 
So, this give you a, gives you a value of 30. Now, um, so comparing this with the value of q, we find that this is greater than 10.625. So, we have the situation root m greater than q. Now, in order to assume instantaneous reaction, we would require that root m be far greater than q. While 30 is more than 10.625, is the uh, difference large enough that we can assume instantaneous reaction. So, we are not sure of that. Therefore, let us not assume that E is equal to E infinity and proceed to calculate the value of E using the uh, transition regime expression, which is this here square root of m into E infinity minus E divided by E infinity minus 1, this also under the square root divided by tan h of the same quantity. Right. In order to simplify our calculations and in order to um, put in place an iterative scheme for calculating the value of enhancement factor, we will uh, calculate a first approximation as E is equal to the numerator. In other words, we assume that the value of this modified Hatta number if you like. Uh, m times e infinity minus e divided by e infinity minus 1 is large enough that is it is larger than 3. So, that we can assume the, the hyperbolic tangent of this quantity to be nearly equal to 1. So, if we do that then we can calculate the first approximation as root m divided by e infinity minus 1 into square root of e infinity minus e, where I have just separated out the values that we know from the value that we do not know. So, this is square root of uh, uh, well square root of m we know to be 30 divided by square root of e infinity is 8.91. So, we have 7.91 here multiplied by e infinity minus e under the square root and this gives you a value of uh, uh, this number here turns out to be 10.67 and therefore, we have the equation E equals 10.67 times square root of E infinity minus E. and E infinity we know to be 8.91. So, if we can square this and uh, obtain the value of E as from this quadratic expression 10.67 squared into E infinity minus E. This is a standard quadratic equation which we can solve and uh, this will give you a value of E as 8.30, which is not too far from uh, 8.91, which is the value that we had estimated for the um, instantaneous enhancement, that is the maximum value of the enhancement factor. So, what we are saying is that even for uh, root m, a factor of 3 higher than q, the reaction is almost totally in the uh, diffusion control regime, that is in the instantaneous reaction regime. So, now, um, since we made the approximation of uh, the uh, uh, denominator that is the hyperbolic tangent term in the denominator uh, being equal to 1, we can test out that assumption by calculating the second approximation, where we calculate this uh, quantity square root of m, uh, which is 30, square root of m is 30, e infinity minus 1. Uh, E infinity minus E divided by E infinity minus 1. So, this turns out to be a value that is sufficiently large 
that uh, this is greater than 3. Therefore, the um, tan h of this quantity here is approximately equal to 1. So, the second approximation also turns out to be 8.30. So, we have converged on a value of the enhancement factor as 8.30, we accept that value and now we are ready to calculate the absorption rate. So, we do that in the following manner absorption rate is the absorption flux that is K L C star which is the physical absorption flux multiplied by the actual enhancement factor. This is the chemical absorption flux the actual absorption flux, but we want the rate in units of uh, uh, moles per centimeter cubed of packed space per second. Therefore, we can multiply this by the interfacial area A S P which is the square meters of area available per unit volume of packed space. So, if we uh, we can substitute this and calculate the value I will leave that to you. Um, one point uh, that we should note is that in our consideration of the various regimes and calculation of rates and so on, we have come across uh, several definitions of this quantity which we have called the interfacial area. So, uh, in our theoretical development we used uh, a hat which we call as the interfacial area per unit volume of liquid. Uh, in one of the earlier examples, we had the uh, case of a sparge reactor in which the term interfacial area per unit volume of dispersion was introduced. Now, remember that the volume of dispersion includes the volume of liquid and the volume of the held up gas. So, this quantity uh, of the this definition of the interfacial area is a little different from the interfacial area uh, uh, a hat that we have used in the theoretical development. And in this example, we have uh, encountered the interfacial area per unit volume of packed space. So, basically uh, it does not uh, make a difference to your calculation of the flux at all because that is given by this expression here. Depending on what units you want the rate to be in, you have to multiply this by the appropriate uh, type of interfacial area per unit volume. So, here the rate is required in um, uh, moles per unit volume of packed space per second. So, we use the interfacial area as square meters per uh, meter cubed of packed space. So, that is uh, a matter that is uh, fairly trivial and does not need to engage our attention any further. So, now this is the rate expression that uh, you would use in uh, the design of the packed bed reactor itself. In other words, uh, in any design exercise you would do a mass balance on the flowing phase. Uh, for a continuous equipment such as this, in which you say that if the equipment is operating at steady state, you would say that uh, in any slice of the liquid, uh, in any slice of the pack bed, there is a certain amount of solute that is entering and there is a certain amount of solute that is leaving and the balance is being absorbed within that uh, uh, slice of the pack bed. So, the absorption rate would be the rate of absorption per unit volume of the packed space multiplied by the volume of the slice. So, this rate of absorption per unit volume of the packed space is what we have calculated here. So, this is the local rate expression that would go into any of your uh, macroscopic balances or reactor level balances. So, that completes our discussion of the um, gas liquid uh, uh, reactions. So, let us uh, summarize uh, what we have seen in the past uh, uh, 6 or 7 lectures. So, we have seen we started out by looking at uh, uh, how does mass transfer occur from a gas to an agitated liquid and uh, we considered uh, this in terms of two possible mechanisms. One is a steady state mechanism what we called as the film theory uh, which assumes that the entire resistance to gas liquid inter, uh, gas liquid mass transfer is located in a thin film of uh, thickness delta located at the gas liquid interface outside of delta the uh, liquid is in a state of continuous mixing uh, and uh, uh, because of the hydrodynamic uh, uh, forces there and because of that the concentration is um, uniform in that region. So, there is a concentration variation that goes from C A star to the bulk concentration that is prevalent in the rest of the liquid and this concentration uh, uh, drop occurs entirely in the uh, diffusion film. So, that is the assumption 
on which the film theory is built. And further we said that because this film is expected to be very, very small and we by uh, later on with reference to the available uh, uh, values of the mass transfer coefficient, we estimated the volume of liquid in this film to be about 0.1 percent or so uh, of the total volume of the liquid. So, because of the volume contained in this film is uh, so small, we are justified in uh, treating this film to be always in a state of steady state. In other words, any changes uh, either on the gas side uh, in terms of the changing partial pressure or on the liquid side in terms of the changing values of C A B. The film is able to immediately adjust itself on an instantaneous basis to these changes. Therefore, the diffusing solute always uh, proceeds as though uh, the conditions were steady. So, we have a very simple uh, equation to solve the steady state uh, diffusion equation, uh, which is a second order uh, ordinary differential equation uh, with the constant boundary conditions. So, uh, this theory predicts that the mass transfer coefficient is proportional to the uh, linear power of the diffusivity. And uh, then we considered an alternative mechanism for the uh, mass transfer of uh, A from the gas side to the liquid side. And this mechanism assumed that the action of uh, uh, turbulence is not to restrict the distance over which the concentration uh, uh, drop occurs as assumed in the case of the film theory but it is to actually periodically throw elements of liquid from the bulk to the gas liquid interface. And depending on the nature of the hydrodynamic field, there is a certain time period during which individual uh, elements of liquid stay at the gas liquid interface and then leave. Because these time periods are expected to be short, the uh, in general the process is assumed to be of an unsteady state nature. So, here um, uh, that is number 1 and the second uh, uh, thing that happens is that because the time of exposure is small, the depth of penetration is also small and therefore, the surface element can be assumed to be uh, infinitely thick from the point of view of the diffusing solute. So, we get to solve a, a partial differential equation of the second order, first order in time and second order in distance uh, in order to calculate the uh, absorption flux in a single uh, surface element as a function of the time it has spent at the interface. In order to calculate the average absorption rate at that location, we have to consider the unit uh, uh, gas liquid interface at that location, which itself is a mosaic of several uh, surface elements of uh, various surface ages. So, the absorption rate in these uh, uh, different elements has to be averaged in order to get the uh, overall absorption rate. And we can do this averaging by assuming two types of um, uh, surface age functions or age distribution functions if you like. And uh, these uh, uh, give rise to two different uh, theoretical pictures, one which was originally proposed by Higby, where he said that every element of liquid spends exactly the same amount of time at the gas liquid interface as every other element. And the second one due to Dankwartz, who said that the picture at the gas liquid interface is more like in a well mixed vessel, where elements of liquid are arriving randomly and uh, departing randomly from the gas liquid interface. So, irrespective of which distribution function you use, it turns out that the uh, mass transfer coefficient is predicted to be uh, uh, predicted to have a square root dependence on the uh, diffusivity. And if you compare these predictions of the film theory and the surface renewal theory with the experimental data, it turns out that the uh, surface uh, renewal theories are closer to the actual pictures than the film theory. But irrespective of that, uh, we should uh, realize that neither of these theories is uh, able to uh, predict the physical mass transfer rate in any real sense, because each of these theories has a parameter that uh, usually in uh, most uh, realistic uh, contacting situations cannot be calculated from first principles. Therefore, the theories are uh, uh, in some sense useless. Uh, in their ability to predict mass transfer rate is concerned, but the usefulness of the theories is in their ability to predict the effect of chemical reaction on the mass transfer rate, what is called as the enhancement factor. So, this is the business that we uh, uh, address next and uh, we saw that uh, whether you are a proponent of the film theory or whether you are a proponent of the surface renewal theories, the effect of chemical reaction on mass transfer 
depends on a value of uh, depends on the value of a parameter called as a Hutta number, which is the uh, relative rate of reaction to the uh, rate of diffusion. So, this there is a definition of the Hutta number that arises on the non dimensionalization of the uh, relevant uh, diffusion reaction equations. And uh, as the Hutta number increases, um, the reactions are uh, the reactions being considered are of ever increasing severity with respect to the uh, mass transfer rate or the diffusion rate. So, we have the slow reaction regime and we have the fast reaction regime and in between we have the transition from slow to fast reaction and uh, all through this uh, these three regimes uh, the slow reaction, the transition and the fast reaction. Uh, the assumption of pseudo first order rate holds because uh, the value of the Hutta number or the value of m that is the square of the Hutta number is much less than the relative abundance factor which governs whether concentration of B is uh, going to be uh, uniform right up to the interface or not. So, in all of these regimes it does not really matter as to uh, whether you use the film theory to calculate the enhancement factor or the uh, surface renewal theories to calculate the enhancement factor. Fair enough, there is a bit of a difference in the transition regime, but that difference is of the order of a, a few percent and if you consider the uncertainties in the values of the physical mass transfer coefficient itself. So, this uh, uh, error is usually subsumed uh, in the uh, errors uh, with which you can calculate the rate of uh, absorption overall. So, the, uh, the point is that uh, as long as you have got a pseudo first order uh, situation or as long as you have a situation in which the concentration of B does not play a role in the absorption uh, uh, rate expressions, uh, the actual mechanism of mass transfer turns out to be uh, unimportant. Uh, the film theory and the surface renewal theory predict the much the same kind of values for the uh, enhancement factor. So, then uh, for larger values of uh, root m that is for reactions which are uh, of uh, even higher severity than the ones that we have considered so far, the reaction is fast enough to deplete the uh, concentration of B close to the interface and this is where the differences between the two sets of theories sa starts to surface. And um, here by and large we should go with the, uh, uh, the more realistic theory that is the uh, surface renewal theory. Fortunately, it turns out that for most practical situations the, the uh, expressions from the surface renewal theories are uh, not very different uh, or not very difficult rather uh, to evaluate the enhancement factors from and therefore, um, uh, we can use the surface renewal theories with without uh, too much uh, uh, difficulty. Uh, so, these are the um, uh, various ways in which we can calculate the enhancement factor and once you have calculated the enhancement factor, the local rate of absorption at any point within the equipment is given by the local mass transfer coefficient and uh, multiplied by the driving force multiplied by this enhancement factor. Okay. So, you had the uh, expression K L into C A star minus C A B for the physical mass transfer uh, rate and all you have got to do now is to uh, put in this value of the enhancement factor as a multiplicator to this expression. Much as uh, we use uh, the effectiveness factor in the case of gas solid reactions to modify the intrinsic rate expression. So, there the basic case was the case of reaction and the effectiveness factor which had a value of less than 1 multiplied this uh, intrinsic reaction rate to give you the actual reaction rate. Here the base case is the base of mass transfer and this has to be multiplied by an enhancement factor which has a uh, value greater than unity in order to give the actual rate of um, uh, mass transfer. So, once you know the actual rate of mass transfer, this is the rate expression that goes into various equipment level balances which you use either for analysis of process equipment or for design of process equipment. So, um, with that uh, we have now completed uh, setting up the uh, re requisite apparatus for uh, doing an analysis or design of gas liquid reaction equipment, um, where the enhancement factor uh, calculations have to precede the uh, writing the expression for the local rate. So, we shall close this set of lectures here and uh, thank you for uh, your attention.